This video is going to be a review of common statistics topics for the CREOG exam. First, we're going to go over different characteristics of screening tests, including sensitivity, specificity, and positive and negative predictive value. So first, to talk about sensitivity, we have our 2 by 2 table there. Sensitivity is the proportion of true positive tests out of all the patients who have a condition. So in other words, it's the ability of a test to yield a positive result for a patient who actually has the disease, which is very important for screening tests because you want your screening test to be highly sensitive to identify as many patients with the disease as possible. To calculate this, you're going to divide the number of true positives out of all the patients who have the disease or the true positives plus the false negatives, or A over A plus C. Another way to think about this is that the false negative rate is going to be 1 minus the sensitivity. Specificity is the percentage of true negatives out of all patients who do not have the disease. Or in other words, it's the ability of the test to obtain normal results for a patient who does not have a disease. To calculate this, you're going to divide the number of true negatives out of all the patients who do not have a disease, or false positives plus true negatives, so D over B plus D. And similarly, the false positive rate is going to be 1 minus the specificity. The positive predictive value and the negative predictive value are dependent on the prevalence of the disease in the population that you're studying. And the positive predictive value tells you, out of all the positive results that you get, how many are actually true positives. So to calculate this, you divide the number of true positives out of all the positive results, so true and false positives, and in other words, A over A plus B. The negative predictive value, similarly, is dependent on the prevalence of the disease in the population that you're studying and can be calculated by dividing the number of true negatives out of all the patients who tested negative. So D over C plus D. Likelihood ratios are another tool to understand the results of the test that you ordered because it tells you how much the use of that test will alter the probability of the patient having the disease that you're testing for. So for example, the positive likelihood ratio is the probability that a positive test would be expected in a patient with the disease divided by the probability that a positive test would be expected in a patient without a disease. So you can think of this as the sensitivity over the 1 minus specificity or the true positive rate over the false positive rate. In a higher likelihood ratio or a likelihood ratio that's greater than 1, it's going to increase the likelihood of your patient having the disease that you're testing for. The negative likelihood ratio is the probability of the patient testing negative who has the disease divided by the probability of a patient testing negative who does not have the disease. You can also think about this as the false negative rate over the true negative rate or 1 minus sensitivity over the specificity. Now I'm going to talk about different study designs that you may be asked about on the CREOGS. The first two that we're going to talk about are observational studies, and these are case control and cohort studies, are the most commonly tested um, observational studies. So the case control study is where you're choosing patients with the disease, comparing them to patients without that disease, and looking backwards to look at their exposures. And you're, this is going to yield an odds ratio, or the odds of disease in the patients, or the odds of exposure in the patients who went on to develop the disease, divided by the odds of that exposure in patients without the disease, which boils down to A times D over B times C. A cohort study is similar, but you're looking forwards. So you're choosing patients with risk factors and then following them to see if they develop the disease in question and then you're going to calculate a relative risk or the risk of disease in patients who are exposed divided by the risk of disease in patients without exposure or A over A plus B divided by C over C plus D. 
the what's thought of the, as the gold standard for a lot of research questions is the clinical trial, specifically a randomized control trial. And this is where you're comparing the placebo group compared to the intervention group. And this may or may not be blinded, but these are more time intensive and difficult to conduct. There are different forms of bias that you may be tested on in the CREOGS. Most com these are the most common types of bias um, that we are asked about here. So one of these is selection bias, and this is when the participants in your study are seem to be biased in some way and that they are not representative of the population that you're intending to study. So for example, if you meant to study a population of all 20-year-olds about sleep deprivation, but for whatever reason, most of the participants in your study are your co-residents. That's going to yield different results because of different sleep patterns in residents compared to the general population. Recall or survivorship bias is when you're asking, is when you're studying patients who developed a particular disease, for example, and you're asking them to recall their exposures. And patients who recently developed a disease may be more likely to report certain exposures because they may, for some reason, be attributing their disease to specific exposures. So for example, asking women whose children are diagnosed with neurodevelopmental delay about any medications that they took during pregnancy, and they may report um, just looking through anything that they might have taken, and then you may attribute an outcome to Tylenol that may or may not be accurate. Observation bias, or the Hawthorne effect, is when study participants behave differently when they're being observed in a study, and that may influence the results of the study. And now I'm going to end with talking about type 1 and type 2 error. So there's a quick and easy way that someone taught me to remember this that has stuck with me. But type 1 error is, what I think of this is a false positive error. So you found a difference in your study, but actually there's no difference. And an easy way to remember this is if you draw the numeral 1, you can easily turn that into a P, and that stands for positive. So this is a false positive error. And similarly, type 2 error, you can think of this as a type or as a negative error, false negative error. So you did not find a difference in your study, but actually there is a difference. And if you look at the Roman numerals too, you can easily connect those to make an N, and you can think of that as a false negative error.